Good morning. Good morning, pen friends. Thanks for the sub, Evan. Since you missed your cheerleaders, let's go. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? What's going on? Good to see y'all. I missed you last week. I missed you Thursday, at least. I missed you at least one day last week. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Everyone's doing well. I take it. We have some we have some hype in the in the chat already. Everyone seems to be in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. I'm rested, relaxed. OSU. Where are my cheerleaders? Son. Fixing that up. Thank. Thank. <clears throat> Condolences on the Braves. So it, it took me a while to recover, not from the losses, but from the sleep. <laughs> I was sleep deprived um, for the for the Braves this week because they had so many late games. I was not going to bed till well after midnight, like two or three nights of games, including Sunday. The terrible game seven loss. Um, we did not deserve to win that game. Um, I don't find any consolation in that, but uh, it sucked. It sucked. Evan, Max, enjoying your first ever Twisby Eco. I'm surprised. What do you think? What do you think? It's a big pin, but it has a narrow section. So I'm wondering what you what you have. Wolves Newcastle this weekend. I am looking forward to that. Hola, Miss G's. Let's not talk about the Braves. I know. We won't talk about them. We won't talk about them much. It's cool skulls, bro. Tony, I got my book ordered. Um, how I missed the, the last one, I don't know. But I did get uh, the the book ordered. So I think I told you that. Bork and Bork. Thanks for the sub. Why did my alerts change? I was playing around with this, um, with my setup. So we could... Um, have uh, a better like i was talking about flipping the cameras for product stream um but for some reason this isn't working and i thought i had it i had it nailed last week right nailed it but nope nope i was kind of expecting that book to be hardcover but it's not it really looks hardcover what is it like a, a like a cloth a5 notebook feeling type of type of deal the eco is comfortable and all the mechanics feel nice and smooth. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great pen. I, I was thinking about this yesterday. I've had, I've had a lot of time to think over the past few days. And you can tell by the, um, the, the stream title today. It's not sp supposed to be some like uh, meta -phil philosophical title, although you can take it that way. Um, but it was, I, I'm more wondering like what you're searching for in terms of stationery. I was going to say, what do you want to buy? What are you shopping for? What are you buying? I don't know. I couldn't come up with, with the right phrasing for the question I wanted to ask today. But I, this is what I've been, I've been thinking about this over my little mini vacation. So I took like four days off, which was great. And I didn't do hardly anything stationary related, which was great too. Like not even much writing or usage. <clears throat> So I was thinking about, um, okay, you know, get back, get refreshed, you know, obviously I have plenty of stuff to review, um, but I'm wondering like, what am I interested in for, on a personal usage level right now? Like what types of things am I wanting to buy from a stationary perspective? And I think I got, I got thinking about this because I was seeing pictures of Nakaya's not that I'm shopping for Nakaya, but the idea came that I, at one point in my fountain pen journey, like the Nakaya was my ultimate pen. And I spent about two years sorting out what I wanted to buy, which model, which style, which color, um, Borat ad, nice, very nice. Um, you know, which model, which shape, which color and saving the money to, to buy it. So like I had this whole process of, of buying that pen. Um, so it's like, do I have those types of pens anymore? You know, where I'm really like, I'm searching something out. I'm doing my research, studying, saving if I need to. Um, and I, I kind of don't. And I'm wondering if y'all do right now, like what things are y'all looking for? Because the whole realization I came to is I can be just as happy with a three dollar 
gel ink pen as I can with a $700 Nakaya. And like, that's not hyperbolic. Like I love my basic gel ink pens and I love my Nakayas, right? To me, there's no difference, even though the perception is there is a huge chasm of difference, right? But to me, there's no difference in my joy for those pens, right? You got some sun. I did get a little bit of sun, Tolliver. I was, we had shockingly good weather, like 85 and sunny for two days that we spent like afternoons at the beach. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Like I didn't get sunburned or anything, but I got, I got a little sun kissed. So yeah, it was okay. So like, that's the thing I've been, I've been thinking about. Um, not that I have some answer or solution or have some meta topic to discuss or, but I'm just thinking of just like, you know, like I'm actually more interested in right now in selling a few pens, right? Um, not a bunch. I maybe like the last time I sold off pens, I think I had almost, I think I had 19 that I sold and I sold all but one of them. Um, this time I might have, I'll probably have less than 10, right? I paired it down pretty well. Um, but there's no thing that I want right now. Like I don't hunt for sailors, you know, I might pick up one if I, if I like it. Canine play. Thanks for the sub. Thank you. I'm so mad at these alerts y'all. All right. We'll try it again. I think I might have it fixed. Puck me. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Rich sticks. Rich sticks just subbed. And now the alert didn't even, there it is. There it is. These alert boxes are such a challenge. It's such a challenge. So, yeah. Oh, I was supposed to send thanks. Ooh, what is that? Uh, K-pop Glow. I like that one. My last stationary adjacent purchase is the Knock Kickstarter. Yeah, uh, number one, thank you. That's awesome. Number two, I'm clearly biased because it's my product and I own the company. But that gets me excited. Right, I literally sat at my desk this morning and was working on a new case design. And I should have brought it in here and shared it with y'all. Uh, might you be selling a Platinum 3776? I might have one with an Architect nib that I might consider selling. I don't know, I, I'll have to think about it. I don't have a stock 3776 that I'd want to sell um i have the which is the red one is the red one sheen or is that the purple one i those those two names are very close to me um which that one's going to be the one to keep the red one a head full of ideas my list is mostly nib grinds these days nothing really stands out as a must-have so that's kind of the idea i think shungyo shungyo is which one the red one and Shiyun's the purple i think okay Shungyo. So I have Shungyo, which I'm keeping. Um, so yeah, head full of ideas. The idea is, okay, like what am I shopping for? I'm shopping for things that are the most specific to me, right? Like I can order, you know, whatever pen or thing that I want, or I can take the things that I have, like head full of ideas is saying, and customize them even more to my liking i've been thinking about that too because i've been getting in some and this is a whole separate argument for me this is this is me this is my uh my oh woe is me you know pen review hat guy is that i've got a couple of pens here recently that i like but i want the nib modified <laughs> you know i was like well brad you dummy you didn't necessarily have to pay for the pen or you got it at a discount just get the nib ground or whatever so yeah <clears throat> Kimmy says the pandemic also put me in a weird spot with my pins. Just feels weird for some reason. Let's go. What, Jackie? Let's go. Thanks for the sub. 14 months. Rewizzles, you're awake. I still, your podcast is queued up. I have like note taking podcasts I want to go. Um, dude, that's one of them. Um, so, uh, Rich says, I'm using the Pilot 912 I bought from you right now and love it. That's one of the pins I most want to see change. That's like a whole different conversation, right? I think that's one of the best pins out there, but it's also super boring. And like, how do you tell, how do you explain to someone how great this pin is and say, yeah, it's like just super basic black and silver. It's like very basic. 
Tolliver, I want a striped brown uh, Pelican 400 and or a Nakaya Piccolo. So I might be selling one of my Nakayas. I, I got to go through the, the things. Um, I don't know. I probably won't sell a Nakaya. I don't know. Is it bad form to send like 20 plus pens just to smooth them and get them enjoyable to write with? I have too many that just need tweaking, not holing. I don't think it's bad form. I think that's a long conversation up front. Say, hey, look, this is what I'm thinking about. And um, like I, I have these pens. I love them. I think they could just be a little bit better. And it's a lot. So, you know, I would love to send these to you to get into your queue. Not a big rush. And I really just want them tuned, tuned up, flowing well, smooth, tines tight, everything looking good. And I think if you start it with a conversation, I think it's no issue. But that's what I would do. <clears throat> good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Tessa. I keep looking at boxes and drawers and trays and that stuff. Storage is always a thing. Do I have a Mont Blanc 149? I do. I do have one. Um, that's a pen I wouldn't mind selling, but I'll never sell it. I just don't use it enough. But is it, it is a reference pen. Hype train level one. Let's go. So the 149 is a complicated pen for me. I thoroughly enjoy it every time I ink it up. I don't want to use it all the time. Um but I keep it because it's a great reference for size. Like that is literally the pen that our Notco pockets were made for. If I was buying one on my own, I too would probably buy the 146 with the silver trim. But like I'll, I'll probably end up with a special edition Mont Blanc at some point. Not like one of the, not like one of the like Le, Le Petit prints, like $2,000 deals but like one of the like they did the ultra black one i forget what they called that um they did was it was it called ultra black and they did it in the 146 i think and that like that would have been a great one under a thousand bucks which is still like that's the biggest thing is i would just rather buy a nakaya you know than saying like i have to have that um mont blanc Coco, I'm looking forward to returning to the office next week where I've had pins stored which have not been used in six months. Oof. Oof. So 146 Ultra Black on Virtual Pin Show. I'm glad I didn't see it. Jay, what are you searching for? Whatever the Blu-rays were lacking on Sunday. Dude. That was not a that was not a good game. Like, I, I feel like they lost that game, not that they got beat. I think a lot of people, they did get beat by the better team overall, but the Braves lost that series. I, I They made too many mistakes. Young guys, hell of a good team. I have no problem, like, with the next decade, us being at the top of our game. And hopefully we can pull something, something out. I love my Mont Blanc Mozart and white and rose gold trim. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> So yeah, this is like, it's it's note that I'm in no dilemma. Like I'm loving my things. Like, okay, so here's a great example. I am just loving my Blackwing pencils right now. Like this, these kind of things come and go, right? I have, you know, all kinds of crazy pens and even expensive pencils like at hand. I have thoroughly enjoyed using this one and the uh, 19th Amendment one. Like that's what I use mostly on this trip. Just filled up that first endless recorder, about to break open the next batch. Good for you. I am desperate to finish my Midori notebook. Have you, I was thinking about this. Have any of y'all, like, you get to the end of a, a bigger size notebook? Like, for me, this is a big notebook, A5. I don't know how many pages this Midori has. But for me, it's a lot. It's, it's this many pages. So, like, I'm in the, I don't know. I'm in the final countdown stage here, right, of this notebook. Does everyone just try to, like, bum rush through? <laughs> bum rush through so you can get to the next one? I've done a great job. I'm very happy with how I've used this notebook. Um, but I'm ready for that next one because I can see it, right? I can see the next notebook. And the next notebook, oh, shut up, Jesse. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm only going to use half the notebook. I should say, I'll start saying that just to make y'all happy. I'm almost halfway done with this notebook, and that'll allow me to move on to my next notebook. 
you start writing a lot of thoughts. That's what I was doing yesterday, Jay. I, I sat down, turned everything off, and just I had this question in my head that I just explored. So <clears throat> I'm eight pages from the end of my journal. Started it two years ago. That's great. Get composted. That's great. Oh, OSU, you want a sailor with a black ion trim? Should I go for the Black Luster 1911 or the Wicked Witch? Does the Black Luster have the metal section and the, the witch has just the black ion plating? That's a, mm, that's a tough call. That's a very tough call. Hey, Paper Cat Lady. Good morning, Mark. I found a new grail pin, Nakaya. Uh-oh, share it. Share it, Sarah. Here's a picture of my Mont Blanc. I want to see this. I mean, technically, when you're done with it, you'll still be halfway done with it. Y'all are permanently on my list. Oh, wow. That's really pretty, tough, Tessa. Good grief. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I. this still, like, the few people that are on my side are shocked at the numbers, at the overwhelming numbers which is what has really thrown me off. The overwhelming numbers that of people who use both sides. So it was it was like it was 3 to 1. Yeah, it, it it just it is not close and that's what surprises me. Not that not that it's it's commonplace or anything like that, but that the numbers were that much of an outlier. So, I still won't do it. It's smaller than the Pilot Elite. Wow, that's cool. Oh, I guess I do have another Mont Blanc. I have the Bohem. Oh, I see it in your hand now. That's wild. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. I wasn't putting the uh, the context in that. All right, Sarah, I'm going to click this link. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, wow, I haven't seen that. That Oh, I see the price. That is a, that is a U pen. Let me. I'm gonna put this one up on the screen because this is wild. Look at that. It's got like an eyeball in it, like stuff crawling out uh, out of the crevasse. Um, I've never seen that one. That is wild. Privilege of a rich society. We can afford to waste paper. Absolutely. I just never thought of it as waste. Terrence Fox, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. That's wild. Yeah, I haven't seen one with artwork like this. That's pretty sick. Uh-oh, Tony's got the, the internet gods. Mm. Paper Cat Lady, thanks for the sub. 13 months. Crazy. I might even talk about this Nakaya on the show. On the show. I don't know why. Nah, it's like Oof, that's crazy. Um, we need a survey for how many of the two-sided people always use both sides versus how many or it depends people. I like that's the thing. I think it depends is a two-side writer just through and through because I'm I am not it depends, right? I it does not depend. I'm not doing it, right? Just out of habit. So I think that it depends are automatically classified. Put it this way, it depends users are never clicking the one side button. So I think I think the I think the poll is accurate. Like if I gave an it depends choice, then we break it out, then it, it, it does flatten flatten the um the ratios a little bit. They get a little bit they get a little bit closer. But I think the point of it by not separating that out, um I think it answered the question correctly. I'm too young for depends. Hallelujah for that. <laughs> you may have convinced me to write on one side for continuing ed classes. I don't want to convince anyone to, to write on one side because that seems to be the wrong side of history. What's the reasoning for one side? Habit, uh, bleed through, see through, ghosting. Just having that distraction on the back side of the page. Also writing on the left-hand side of the page. I was thinking like do left, what I, the poll I would like is okay if you're a left-hander do you write on one side or two sides because i could see lefties writing on both sides being more of a challenge right because they're coming over the 
the left page to get to the right page on a lot of occasions unless they're an underwriter. Um, like I've rarely even used, all right, COSU. I've rarely even used like my field notes style notebooks, both sides. I always use two sides, but I don't necessarily fill the whole page, but I always use both, both sides. Tessa, never both, only one side, nice. Two sides, if it's not spiral bound, the binding messes with my grip. Also, that's, an that's another issue, right? We are, people who, when I say we, the people watching this stream, we tend to have the options of very nicely bound notebooks where they'll lay flat and there's nothing in the middle that's going to get in the way of your hand no matter which side for a righty on the left page or for a lefty on the right page, right? All of us watching generally have a really good option for a second second page writing. You smudge everything so it doesn't matter. But you, you write on both sides of the page, Jay, you, and you just finish your endless recorder. And with a fountain pen, probably a lot of it, right? So no real issues. Or you just, you're like, you know, if they're smearing, they're smearing, and I just deal with it. What's up, Jim? I used to write one-sided, but I invested in better paper and pens that could handle both sides. It always annoyed me that I could use only one side. See, I think that's my biggest, like, hurdle in this whole thing, is that it has never been an option mentally for me to use the left side of the page right for whatever reason that mentality was never built into my head two sides in a hobo daily but one side in the journal makes sense left-handed writing on both sides and at all angles depending on where in the page i'm at okay yeah under at the top side in the middle over at the bottom that makes sense definitely down to paper quality if the paper bleeds so much that I can't use the back, I don't use that notebook. Yeah, that's totally fair. Like, that's the thing that we're in. Like, I'm, again, this whole thing, I am just, I, I feel like I'm on top of a lot of things, and I miss that completely. Right? That one was just lost on me. Neo Wiz Master, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate you. 26 months. That's amazing. What did I get? We got, a like, a fan. Yeah, K-pop fan. We got, we got lots of K-pop emotes. I like that. Must be K-pop month or something that Twitch is doing. For some, for work, I'll sometimes use the bottom side of the left page sideways. That I could get behind. Like, that's something I would do, right? Like, I'm not going to use the left-hand side of the page consistently. But if I need to make, like, a subnote, footnote, sketch, um that I'm cool like I'm not against using it I would just never write on here on that page every month is k-pop month lefty here mostly only on right page mostly just a hot yeah like I'll pull out information like I should go I should count like I'm not gonna do it but like it's like there's definitely some left-handed pages in this notebook I would say just flipping through here it's less than five, easily. I never buy spiral sidebound notebooks just because the loop stick in my hand. I hate them. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, like I was saying before, we're very lucky to have options. And I'm gonna show. I, I have. I don't have much um, like any specific topics today. That's why I want to talk about this. But I have a couple of notebooks here that I got in while I was gone, or one right before I got was gone, and one that came in while I was gone. And I should go ahead and show them now because I think it's part of this conversation. Because, well, you'll see, you'll see why. But I think it's part of this conversation. Let me move this out of the way. For me, I use one side because if I want to go back and reference my thought from one day to the next, it's either I have it on one side, it goes back to taking notes in college. Yeah. Um, Right page only, then it became a matter of use up all the real estate. Evan, enjoy your meeting. All right, let me, uh, so I did I did flip the cameras. 
I don't have anything over there yet, but I did do this. All right. So, yeah, we still have some focus issues with the camera, but it's going to allow this better. Even though it seems like it's a it seems like it's a little bit of an angle. I did clean the camera this morning. We'll mess with that later. But I got the new Pebble Stationery products in. And so two things before we dig into them. One, this is a size that I love, but it's non-standard, right? Does this have a true international size other than A5 Slim? I think people, I call this A5 Slim or Traveler size because that's what it is. Does this have an official international size that you call this? So let's look at the standard notebook first. It's not, it's, yeah, it's a non standard standard, Jim. That's what I think of field note size, right? Three and a half by five and a half is non standard, but it's so common, it's become the thing that people make things around. So soft, soft cover, Tomoe River paper 52. Uh, GSM. This is the old, this is the original Tomoe River. They have not switched. Not sure if me, but is the focus shot? It is absolutely shot. So this is the challenge with doing this. It, as I move things, this camera isn't good enough to like really nail focus. Right? And also because I keep moving and it keeps trying to pick up different things, you can see the light changing. You gotta set the focus manually on those. So, soft, pliable cover. Pebble stationary logo here at the bottom. There is no way in HE double hockey sticks I'm using both sides of this page. I, it is, not only do, I just don't do it, you know, even though I can squish it down and it'll lay pretty much flat, just the thinner idea of it, just, I don't know. But this actually seems more wasteful than my big one if I don't, right? So this is, how many pages is this? 197, 198, so 200 pages essentially, Tomoe River. It's got, um, it's got an ink swab thing in the back. So you can do each right all the way across from left to right across the spine. That's pretty much not quite A5. So that's A5 width. So what would that be? This is 8.3. It's probably close to 10, 10 inches across. Pebble does use the 52. Yes, this is 52. And this is the original Tomoe. So this is essentially the same thickness as this one. About 200 pages, but thinner to Moe River. This is an awesome notebook. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting, right? So that's the, this is just the standard A5 Slim size. What do y'all call these? Do you, do you call these A5 Slim? Or Travelers? Because those are the only two names I would know to call these. I think Pebble even calls them Travelers. Is it on there? Is it on this book? The SKU is TR, TNR, which is Tomoe River Travelers Notebook. So, Traveler Size, Traveler Size, yeah. Which, I'm surprised that's not a like a takedown notice, right? Like a bullet journal. If you call the, you can make it traveler size, but you can't call it traveler size, right? Because, you know, of the brand. So, who knows? 
it, someone called it a5 slim some company um and i that kind of stuck with me i was like oh that makes sense you're telling me it's the same you know same height as this which if i had the cover open it would be you can see it's the same height so it's the you know 8.3 inches or whatever width just cut in half essentially so yeah but I wonder if Travelers ever goes after anyone for calling it Traveler size because there's so many inserts right it's a whole it's a whole industry of Traveler's Notebook inserts like if you look on Etsy and same with Bullet Journal you just usually can't call the product Neo oh my gosh 20 subs Neo oh my gosh thank you so much Wow that it I I'm speechless I'm speechless thank you so much I I don't even know what to say you're amazing thank you so much I really appreciate that that's uh that's super cool y'all 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 shoot some emotes for uh for neo wow wow yes you can, you can get big pin hype now <laughs> wow i cannot continue <laughs> thank you so much oh my gosh that's cool thank you so much that really means a lot i appreciate it oh my gosh okay i'm gonna take a drink on that big water big water day oh wow so i have my uh i have my y'all see me pull it up i have tweet deck on this other monitor um and i just happened to look yeah i'm glad we don't have the camera full on my face here because I get emotional about these things. So I'm glad we have small, small Brad camera now. Um, but I was looking, I just happened to glance over um, in my notifications, it shows who follows you. Um, Jack Zagori Designs, y'all remember them? They did one of the first, uh, what, do they, what do you call it? The leadless pencil that I have. And they, they're known mostly known for like the um pen stands like jim's saying really cool pen stands and um i think they called it the beta the beta pen or pencil um that i I'm a, i bet i reviewed that 10 years ago um and uh i hadn't really talked much with them since um but i know they're still out there because i see their stands and things like that so yeah that was interesting just out of the blue follows okay all right <clears throat> Let's see. So this is the planner. This is the same size TN regular dot grid um, undated planner. This is the um, format, the, the Traveler's format that originally got me into my layout that I like for a planner, right? With the full week on the left page and note page on the right. Okay, so same same soft cover, Tomoe River, Pebble Stationery stamping, out of focus. But the layout, sorry. So the layout is the traveler's style that I first fell in love with and that, that I use now for my um, William Hanna journal, right? So you just, this is basically a one week layout. Okay. So seven days on the left, all equally sized. It's got space for the date. So you just write in the date as you go. And then it has an open notes page on this side, you know, and goes on and on and on. This I use both sides of because it's kind of designed that way, right? 
I'm forced into the left side for my calendar, and then I'll use the right side for notes. Again, I've showed you this William Hanna forever. It's it's the layout that I use. It's kind of the only one that I that I like. So, except the, these are pre-printed, right? So it's the same same concept here. Blank page on this side. So which I'll use, you know, like this week I've just started putting notes over there, things like that. Some days have some weeks have very few notes to none. Some have a ton on them. So like this is one with a bunch on them, you know, things like that. So, um, so yeah, like this is kind of the ideal layout for me. Like if I wasn't, Tony, are you talking to me? You know, I don't think you actually follow me on Twitter. That's probably going to keep it that way. For planners, there's the advantage that you usually write less density, so it's easier to use both sides. Yeah, like I'm driven to the left side specifically, even though I have a note page over here, you know, unless I need to expand on something or have some ideas or things like that over here. But I just find this has always been my most useful pattern. This is where, like we made a weekly card that I'm sold out of on Knock that has this format on the front right it's just a large four by six card with monday through sunday and then blank on the back same concept right use the the week on the left this on the on the on the right so i need to uh bridge club thanks for the follow why are my alerts not muting i wonder on this camera setup i may not have my alerts tweaked correctly so not a big deal. Brad, what size William Hanna do I have? Uh, A5. So yeah, this is my favorite layout. So yeah, my William Hanna is A5. A5 is pretty much the ticket, right? Oh, look, there's a future task. Reorder William Hanna. I think I already did that though. So yeah, this is A5, this is A5. So most of my active notebooks are A5. So there you go. All right, so I'm gonna give this planner away probably next week. Never had enough scheduled stuff to use a week view. I think I pretty much only use A5 notebooks now. That's kind of the same, same here-ish. All right, get this back in here without tearing it so I can give this away. So I'm giving away a William Hanna. No, I'm gonna give away this uh, Pebble notebook. I'll see if I can give away a William Hanna. I'm giving away a Hobonichi Techo today. Y'all should go sign up for that, right? The A5 Rotor Fod and Tasha McGlider has changed my life. That's a great product. It never totally, I've tried to do the three separate notebooks, like with Travelers. I've set up a Knock seed case with three soft cover A5 notebooks, um, Rotor Fodden. Um, I just do better with the singular, singular notebook setup. I, I love the concept of it though. Like that's something I want to use I love the idea. It does not work for me. I, I've, I've tried that plenty of times. It, just, it does, doesn't work. Um, all right, so we're going to give away that Pebble Planner probably next week. Again, I'm giving away the Hobonichi Techo today, starting today. The entries are open for the Techo A6 size and a black cover. So go to Panatic.com. You'll see that over there. Uh, someone wants to share the link in the stream. That would be Coolio by me. I use three skinny notebooks for different committees and stuff like that in my rotor font. See, I think that's awesome. Like, I think it's like the mega cool setup. It, I just haven't found it work for me. All right, so these are the Sumkins I got uh, before I left. Thank you, Mike. These are the Sumkins I got before I left. I, I have I didn't open them before I left I'm wondering if so like pebble stationary and Sumkin did did me a solid 
by sending me two things, one for me to review, one for me to give away, which I always love that. So I'm very, very, very thankful that they, they sent me that. So these both look the same. Um, same belly band. Open touch, close your eyes, feel Sumkin. Interesting, interesting. If you ever draw the name of someone who's won a giveaway before, do you choose another name? Can you win twice? Um, I don't obsess over it. Like, I don't keep a list. Like, I won't lie to you, Sarah. Like, since you just won one, and if it came up again, like, in recent memory, I would pick someone else. But most of the time, I don't even bother. So... I got my slingshot painter based on, based on the uh, recommendation from chat. I got to order that. I'm, I'm going to write that down right now. So I don't know if that's fair and equitable, Sarah. That's what I do, right? If, I, if someone I know has won something big in a recent time frame, I'll repick. Generally, but I literally don't track that stuff. Like, it's not that big of a deal to me. I know I've had people win things twice, both from members giveaways and from like public giveaways. And like, that's totally like, I have no problem with someone winning twice. But I'm not, but if I like have a mental note, like, oh, I know someone just won the Techo in like a month from now, if I'm giving away um, Lamy Studio, I'll probably redraw. But there's no, I don't have an official policy. It's, it has happened. Um, and the only reason I've known it's happened is because someone told me like, oh, I won this like two years ago. Thanks for doing this. Like, there's no way I would know. I mean, I give away something every week. I, I, I'm not going to audit a list on duplicate winners. I'm just not. It's not my thing. Like, I smash the button and share the winner. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Um, the only time, and it's never happened, Mike uh, has always told me if I ever come up in a giveaway, don't pick my, don't let me win anything. <laughs> I mean, he usually doesn't enter, but all right, I need to order the uh, slingshot planner. So I just keep the rules like, as simple as possible. And that makes it easy for me. Hi, pray 4 j 9 Welcome. All right, let's see what these Sumkins are. Do we do we need to discuss the uh, the phrasing here a little bit more? Open. Touch. Close your eyes. Feel. Sumkin. Right? I mean, you got me there. Wow. Do it in ASMR now. We'll just do it in ASMR when I open these. Okay, good morning, Mike. All right, so um, these have, well, there's two different color covers here, which you can't see because of my head. So I'm not, I'm guessing these are, they did a, the, an undated planner, kind of like the uh, last Mordori. So let's, the last word is Sumkin, the brand. So this is the darker of the two colors. And that was today's moment of zen. All right, these are a little tapey, a little extra tapey, getting these out. They have a universal planner as well as undated. They've been really confusing me with their products, Jim. I'm not gonna lie. Like I would have to really research that because they've gone from very simple um, concepts and ideas to everything. Yes, Pactagon. All right, so it's got this cool little cover. I almost need to like, if I raise the camera, would that be better or worse? Because these are larger products. Okay, so this is just like, okay, so this is almost like the, just the packaging for the planner. It's very well done. Um, nice to meet me. Pages. Um, it's beautiful, right? Like, this is why I love them. 
It is beautifully packaged, beautifully well made. I'm trying not to like totally destroy these things open, opening them in case I want to give them away, right? I mean, I know people wouldn't care, but I it I care. Yeah, that's not going to work. We're just going to have to open this. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, very nice. It just says pages. No other notation on the cover. Like, I don't know what completely it is yet. Oh, look, I love this. Your project, your notebook's unique number is 670. Move in with your thoughts, ideas, and make yourself at home. All right, Zoomkin. Um, project name, date, start. Caution. How many notebooks have a caution statement? Caution, this product is made using the highest quality materials. Be careful. The day-to-day -day use of this product may cause addiction to good things. As a side effect, you will no longer be able to use cheap, low-quality paper goods. Sumkin is not responsible for any side effects caused by addiction to its products. For more information, please visit sumkin.com. I'm on board with this. Like, open, touch, close your eyes, feel Sumkin? That's a little sketchy. Caution, you might become addicted. I'm down. Um, blank page notebook. Are there dots? Are there like super light dots? No, this is blank. So this is your A5 slim, traveler style, completely blank notebook. This paper, it doesn't feel overly thick, but it's it's got some thickness to it. So Sumkin, if you'll recall, again, they came on my radar because they made the, the planner layout that I like. The seven days on the left, blank on the right, and they did it in a two-part A5 soft cover notebook. So I kept those in a seed case. You can tuck them in there. And that was my first half of the year, second half of the year. And then they just stopped making it the next year. Um, so now they make all these different things. So it has these, um, these end pages. So... So they just call this one slim. So this is size number three. And the model would be four. So this is plain. So this would be 304 is this model number. I think. Because it doesn't, like there's no marking that tells me exactly what this is. I, I like the... Um, I like the layout and I like how they do this, but I would like them to say this is the 304, just so I can be confident in telling you this is the 304 instead of saying I think this is the 304. So 304 pages, are any of these called pages? Because I'm wondering what the paper thickness is. Because it doesn't list a paper thickness between the notebooks and the sketchbooks and planners and sketch planners. I'm assuming this is the notebook. I don't think it's thick enough to be the sketch page. Yeah, because their sketch pages are for watercolors and gouache yeah so this just must be the standard so this is not thick enough no nothing on the packaging at all except open touch close your eyes feel Sumkin. that's it that's all that's on the packaging uh, nothing on the belly band nothing on the box i would like to know that this is uh gouache yeah, are we gonna have uh, some some gouache pronunciations now? So yeah, I would like something on here for as fine of a job as they have done with this packaging and the quality of it. I would like it to say this is number three hundred four, so I can be certain in the chart in the back. So this other one has a an ivory color cover. So let me see what it is. Let's see if it's different. 
so that's the olive cover so there's no markings on the outside of anything I'm putting this like guar with a sh gouache like gouache so the only way I can tell when I have these two notebooks which one's which is I only because I know I open this one's olive and this other one's ivory also WTF they are expensive that's also changed <laughs> since i've used them last gym they like the planner that i want now is like 70 dollars or something like that so i'm a little bit flummoxed in here but they went through like the whole process of why the prices are changing this was like a year or more ago um, and what was going on with the brand and why all this is changing because i brought my planners i think were like 24 or something they are mega expensive now so like this one has this ivory literally no way to know what this is until we dig into it okay so this one might be a planner see agenda de mille de mille vingt et un is that something one page Per day, agenda Samanye. Oh, vingt-et-un, vingt-et-un. Gotcha. Deux mille vingt-et-un. Sorry, 2021. Thank you. Deux mille vingt-et-un. Okay. This is very tapey. Ugh. How much is this one? So this is the same size, the A5 Slim Traveler size. Um, no markings on the outside. This notebook's unique number, 740. Like you can feel the quality in this, but it's still, so is this one 75 euro? Like this exact one in my hand is 75 euro. Holy mackerel. That's stiff. All right, so here's the layout. Wow, I didn't realize that. So this is the similar layout that I'm used to. Seven days on the left. They do a thing where they break it out hourly um, in what's really a vertical format, which doesn't work for me. Like if you're gonna do hours across, I don't know that I want the day blocks set up this way. So I would just ignore the hours and use the day blocks for my tasks. And then they have, um, you, have you have different calendar type setups on this side. This was a little bit more complex daily or weekly planner than I would be comfortable with. Week 42, there must be other pages in here. Okay, so this is like the full the full planner. So it's got a yearly planner, a calendar for three years, time of the world, habit tracker, monthly calendar, weekly planner, Sumkin book. So this is the full, this is the full calendar. So this is the full, this is the all the things, the kitchen sink model. So there's your year, there's the monthly for 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, different times of the world, just like fun pages. Um, goes into your habit tracker. So this is these pages seem useful um, because it's not overwhelming. It's one, two, three, four, five habits um, for the month that you can track. So you go to habit tracker. Let's see what we get. Then we have two page per month section. The only thing is they're not defined. There's no way. There's no markings to go to know which sections which. You'd have to have some bookmarks. All right, the monthly section, then do we get into the weekly, which is where I was started with? Yeah, then we get into the weekly section. 
Yeah, gotta add tabs. It seems like it's screaming for tabs, like there's no markings. I guess you can flip and you'll see some markings, but it's not really that good. They do it by month. Oh, I don't even know what those are. And then we have, what, 60 pages of blank. Like, this is cool. Like, I like this. So this is your all-in-one, one-stop shopping um, planner. Totally giving this one away. Because, um, I, I mean, I'm not going to use it. It's awesome. It's hell of expensive, so I would like someone to, to win it. Um, if I'm going to spend that much, I think I would, at a minimum, I would want this, but in full A5, which is going to be even more expensive. Yeah, it feels great. It looks great. It's obviously super well made. It's, it's very high end. They don't say what paper they use. The company is Sumkin. They don't list their paper. Um... I mean, it's impressive. It's impressive. It's supposed to be some Italian paper. Yeah, you're right, Jim. I do remember them saying that at some point. Um, I was impressed with the paper that I used for the planner a couple years ago. It's a little toothy, but it handled fountain pens very, very well. So I didn't mind the toothiness. This, But this paper in this book feels like it's going to be different than this one. So this will be, we'll review the plane and then we'll give away the agenda. Will be the plan for these. So these next, so both of the plane notebooks I'm going to keep or send out for reviews from Sumkin and um, uh, Pebble. And then we'll do reviews of the other ones. Just because I know I'm not going to use either of these planners for 2021. I'm still going to go, I'm going to go William Hanna at least one more year. I thought I was going to switch this year just to mix it up, but I, I really like what I have going here. So yeah, we'll, uh, I, I'm a little bit disoriented at the price. I knew they were expensive. It seems... worth it like the quality the craftsmanship is there it's a tough pill to swallow i'm not gonna lie thinking that the price is great i don't know that i would pay that much for it but like i get it i get it um and if i'm gonna buy this planner this exact planner at a premium price tag like that I'm gonna want the full A5 size because you're asking me to pay a price that's a commitment price, right? This is not a throwaway price. This is a commitment price. And if I want that, um, I'm gonna want it in the format that I want, to that I'm gonna get the most use out of, and that's gonna be the A5. So, like these are, like I said, these are commitment prices. Which I'm okay, I'm okay with paying a lot for notebooks, right? Like I'm a Masubi customer, right? That's the next book notebook. The, so I'm saying this knowing that the next notebook, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm about to use a $130 notebook and have no qualms about it whatsoever. So, but I also understand you're buying different things, right? They're not, they're not, uh, you know, they're, it's apples and oranges. How much is this note, notebook model? Chaos, thanks for the follow, appreciate you. What, how much is the, the plain one? Is the plain one 69, the, just the open notebook? I'm kinda interested in that. I don't know if I'm gonna send that off to someone else to review or review that myself. Probably send both of these off. But we're 100% giving away the planners. Like right now is the is planner giveaway season. For me if you missed it i'm giving away a hobonichi techo so that one with the cover that's like 80 bucks no like 55 bucks one of the kimono ones no i got um the indigo denim you know i like my japanese denim styles 
So I got one of those uh, iridescent denim, I think he called it. It's one of the iridescent ones. Sorry for the um, the noise. Yeah, iridescent denim something or other. But yeah, like I'm going to have no qualms using that. So is this one really that expensive? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Slim 304, 100. 40 pages, 36 euros. Okay, so that must be what this is. Because these are thick pages. This this paper seems different than this. I, I need to look at the paper. This seems like a this seems like the paper I used in the planners before that was nice and thin. This seems a little bit thicker to me, but not like sketchbook thick. So I'll have to find the spec. Same paper description, really. It feels different. Why is that? I don't know. I didn't do them side by side. I should have. I don't know why this the planner one felt thicker. So, anyway. So, I might look at I might look at an A5 with the graph paper in the back of this. I wish we could have more info on their paper than the high quality Italian. Did I do a review of that planner? Like I was always hesitant to review planners because they're like not like evergreen, but I should have reviewed it because it was new. I might have reviewed it. Let me look. I know you can't totally tell everything. Whoops. Can't tell, totally tell everything from a review. God dang it. Yeah, I didn't do a specific review of it. But you can see what I think. Like you're not gonna be able to tell anything from this. Boy, why doesn't this want to give me a link? It's a basic. Oh no, they know what it is. No, it's it's. We're not telling you, but it's nice. We promise, right? I do that too. I mean, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> Right, that's a difference. <clears throat> so I don't know that this link is even going to be worth you seeing. If I can freaking find it. Boy, this is acting weird. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, you can see a picture down below. I don't know that it's gonna really do you any favors. It's, I mean, you can't really see what the what the colors like or anything. <clears throat> but that paper seems like the paper that's in this planner. And the paper is really good. But it, like I said, it has a slight bit of texture. But it no bleed, no feathering, no nothing. But yeah, that's not really the best. Oh, you do, hey, uh, for your, uh, I forgot, for your, um, you know, your 80, 75 euros or 80 euros, whatever it is, you get some cool postcards. Bottom of the Eiffel Tower. Oh. To Pen Addict from Pen Addicts. Enjoy. Thank you, Fyodor. Uh, top of the Eiffel. Neat little cards. These are very nice. I like these. All right. So that's that. So, yeah. Um, more to learn about what is really... 
version two of what Sumkin's doing, right? I think this is kind of the version two because they stopped production completely for like six months, I think. I'll have to go back and do my research. But I honestly think, you know, they made a bunch of books, had some success um, in the way the story has changed now with the pricing and all of that it almost makes me like think though well, they weren't making enough or didn't make like good business decisions and i'm i i know about making bad business decisions to sell your product big brad is brad big brad is back that was harder to say than i anticipated <clears throat> so who knows who knows but it is it is a new world for um Sumkin. I'm going to probably, like I said, probably, I'm going to think about ordering an A5 if I can get it in the graph paper, but not for a while because I'm going to do the um, Masubi journal next. So that'll be my next thing. I wanted to pull up one thing, see if I had any more questions um, from the topic today, which I don't always do topics. Um, so the idea of you know buying stuff and shopping for things like what are y'all finding right now that's that's interesting to you what kind of things like we started to get into like what's interesting but like what is interesting enough to you to like put it on your shopping list these days and why like like for me like i wrote down a couple of things like the things that interest me is that they have to be fun and functional, right? Um, they have to be easy to use, like a pen. Like the pen can't be too fidgety, right? Or the pencil. And honestly, there's got to be something cool about it, right? Like, and then, you know, trying to decide how am I using the product? You know, am I using this for work? Or am I using it for fun? Am I using it for journaling? Am I using it for design? You know, those are the kind of things I'm thinking about. I want a copper pen. Um, tactile turn makes a good one. Who else? Karis, obviously. Karis Customs, tactile turn. Um, the neatest one, because it's a little bit thinner than those, is, or yeah, if you're look, are you looking for a fountain pen or a standard pen? foolish fox i think that will narrow it down because i was going to recommend a ballpoint that one um is it i want to say it's not scribo cleo scribent that uh, papier plume sells we reviewed it on the blog it's a thinner copper ballpoint it's pretty killer it's like 90 bucks but like yeah fountain pen matthew martin pens awesome like you can get some really cool designs Oh, fountain pens? Then, yeah, I'd look at Matt Martin and Tactile Turn and Karis Customs. All right, see you, Hobby 100. Shown design for the smaller one. I'm going to give away a copper shown design pretty soon. I have that in the giveaway queue. Uh, get composted. What do you think of the new 10th anniversary Plazers? I like them, but I'm troubled by the price difference between the U.S. and the U.K. The U.S. price is the price of any other Plazier. The U.K. has them for a premium, almost doubling the price. We find that with plat, uh, excuse me, pilot sometimes too in the UK. So are these the uh, gradient colored plays ears that are like in the US twenty twenty two dollars? Do I have that correct? I want to show them, but the fun colored ones are too cool to choose the copper first. <laughs> Ti scribe. Um, trying to think of the fountain pen ones like urban survival gear is i love the format of those pens they're killer and i, I don't know if kelvin does copper or not but it's not fountain pen looking for a desk scratch pad for home office recently got a baron fig mastermind like don't think i love i mean the rhodia makes an a3 which is like a little bit bigger than the mastermind i'm pretty sure if you can find them and find someone that will ship it to you 
um, smaller desk pads, you're looking at something like the Pano Book. Those are my choices. But I'll use um, I'll use an A4 Rhodia as a desk pad a lot of times. But I've gone to like the Pano Book style or an A5 top bound book. Um, I haven't used the the bigger A3. But that's what I was thinking about getting for the, this desk. But I'm trying to get Anna to make me make me something different. Montegrappa Copper Mule. That's a pretty good idea. Kara still does copper fountain pens, I'm almost certain. Oh, so where was it? Uh, I just saw the price. Where'd it go? Ah, there it is. Get composted. Uh, the gradient color plays ears. Cult pens are selling for 35. I don't know what it is about some of those prices. Like, I can't. We have, it's like two or three years ago, we had a big conversation about Pilot in the UK was like buying Pelican if you're in the US. And, like, you try to make sense of it and you just can't. So a lot of times people in the U.S. will just buy their Pelicans from Cult Pens and then vice versa, people in the U.K. will buy Platinum, in your example, from the U.S. because the shipping will definitely make the difference. And there's no answer to this. Like I emailed like Pilot in U.K. and like trying to get some answers. And they're just like, that's the price that, you know, we have to pay to get these and whatever extra customs fees and things like that. So, you know, I, I wish I had a clear answer, but I, I don't think there will ever be a clear answer. There's a copper lily put if you don't mind thin. Ooh. I've seen like some really worn out copper lily puts. That's a pretty cool pen. Yeah, the plays ear might also not be worth the shipping cost, right? Like if you're starting to get into a $50 plays ear, that may not be the best idea. If I can't get a Twilight or Sunset Vanishing Point, these players might do. I sub I theoretically have one of those coming. I haven't seen it yet. Imagine a Copper Supra. No. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, if you can find some other people to go in on the plays ears, I don't know if that's an option. You know, anytime you have you're trying to mitigate shipping costs internationally. Um, having having partners in in the order it will always help it's already brass so copper wouldn't be worse yeah i guess so brad it's all your fault i had to buy two of the conklin mini graph i need to go buy that that seems cool i was surprised at that i'm gonna write that down too So I've been using the, uh, if you saw my Instagram post, I've been using the Auto Hub Design 03 frequently. And I'm going to reserve my thoughts on this um, for the review, but it's not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a dead simple review, but it's not. All right, what else we need to talk about today? Y'all got anything else for me? I'm gonna wrap it up soon. Any podcast topics you want us to hit? I gotta plan that this afternoon. I gotta figure some things out. We've got uh, got a couple things on the on the agenda so far. I did some calculations. It might actually be cheaper to buy the plays ears from the U.S. even with shipping and customs. Absolutely. Did we ever figure out what we can do with the ink drops? No, we didn't. I need to get my Tyler on that. That's his job. Did you check out the virtual pin shows? I haven't yet, but I'm participating in the Detroit pin show. So I'm gonna do some of that with them. Um, I need to write that down actually. So I'm gonna be doing a makers panel for the Detroit pin show. And then I think I'm gonna do a knock um, a knock meet the makers thing um as well 
for like uh, have my own spot. But I'm gonna do an interview session with uh, Edison Pens, Heinz Pens, uh, Dale Pencala. What's he call his pen company? And then uh, Hardy Pen Rights. So Brian Gray, um, Jim Heinz, Greg Hardy, and Dale Pencala. And I will be interviewing them. That should be fun. Opus McCann, thank you. I always forget that. So that's that's like in three weeks or so. I'm curious about the idea of subscription services since CW just continued the pencil box. Do they help grow businesses or stifle innovation? This is a wonderful question. We're going to talk about that. That's one of my topics for the podcast tomorrow is the CW change. Not necessarily subscription boxes. It is insanely hard to manage a subscription service. I wouldn't wish that on anyone despite the idea being awesome, right? The idea is fantastic for consumers. Um, but from a retailer, it's got to be brutal. You have a true, I've looked at those Trufe boxes. Those are cool. Field Notes has written about it in the past, yeah. Like, Art Snacks is still killing it. They're doing a really good job, right? Art Snacks and Field Notes are the ones that have executed and have been able to sustain it. But they're also, for the most part, that's their primary focus, right? So CW, it's not their primary focus. I guess Blackwing's still doing it pretty well. Would you say it's Blackwing's primary focus? I would say not. Um... So that's a good example, but like art stacks and field notes, that's their primary focus. Um, I'm trying to think of others that have come and gone. I don't know, it's hard. Like if it's not your primary thing, I think it would be hard like CW. Like it, I think it just takes up more time than it's worth doing. Even though they, they sold out their boxes, right? They were always pre-sold out. Um, and it's still probably just proved that and they raised the prices and they probably still discovered that it wasn't worth doing worth so i agree with that evan i think that surprise boxes work better with consumables like paper and pencils when it comes to durable goods like fountain pens i feel like i do be disappointed most months i mean it's also maybe not our market like for fountain pens like what would i benefit from a fountain pen subscription And would I would most people like for two, like for two orders, right? At some point, like that's I don't feel like that's a long term customer, like a Field Notes or a Blackwing. CW, I like the discovery aspect of it, and I, I did subscribe to the ink subscriptions at Goulet back in the day. Yep. And it got too big for them, but it got it gets too big for me. Like I couldn't use it was like five. It, I think it was monthly, like which is way aggressive, way aggressive. Ink flight's still going. Yep, Ink Journal. Um, I I think it's just hard. It's just hard to manage the time versus the profit. Like it's it's a big commitment. Seems like a good way to build a following, but too hard to maintain. Yeah. Like, you know, also, are you creating, cust like in CW's case, are you creating customers for the shop proper? I'd say in their case, probably, they were, it was already their customers. So, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Like, I would, I could never do it, like, years ago someone wanted me to do just, you know, like a, essentially like a, a pen box, right? But like a, you know, gel ballpoint, all that stuff forever. But I would have, number one, I, it's an instant no. Like I have no interest in doing that. And number two, I, I, it's because I think it would just be extremely difficult to say, hey, these are the pens I think are great every so often. Um, because it might not be true, right? I might not have to. I might have to send you products I really don't love that I only like, but I have to tell you I love them, and that's an issue. 
you know, that's from, that's my perspective, right? That's not this perspective of like, you know, like an art snacks box where they're saying, Hey, these are products you use to create. If it was coming from me, I would feel like, Hey, these are products I'm telling you are good. And that's a different thing. So my, if I did, so that was, that's my last subscription, the CW pen, pencil box. I'll have no subscriptions. Um, I would subscribe to like one of the Japanese food, one of the Japanese candy ones that that would be interesting to me. But like, I don't do the Japanese stationary boxes, even though they're cool. They're just a little bit too kawaii for me. Restock of Pigma microns and sign on a DX every month. Exactly. So yeah, like I do food box. I don't know. I'd be, I'm just particular. Like, I don't know. I would try like the Japan, Japanese candy one. Um, another option could be boxes that aren't subscription or on a pre-order basis. So you don't have too much stock. I don't know if it'd be worth the hassle. So like CW sells kits already, right? If you're into this, try this kit of pencils that they just keep inventory of. Right, so that's like a pre-packaged set of products, which I think is good. Franklin Christoph prototype subscription boxes. You would have so many people unhappy with that. That would be crazy. Like, it's a great theory, right? It's like, oh, let me pay you $150, $200 a month or a quarter because you wouldn't do that monthly. And you send me a pen. Oh, I don't like this pen. Damn, I just blew $200. <laughs> Should I sell it? <laughs> <laughs> it would put everyone in a weird position. <laughs> like, yeah, I, like the risk isn't, the, the high dollar risk isn't worth it. Like I'm more risk averse than that. Yeah, that's why I'm in, uh, like Trufe has, has done all different levels. Yeah, I wanted to look at that head full of ideas. I saw the email about it. Um, I'm going to actually going to note that down. Like I'm all for everyone doing what they, what they think is best. Right. But yeah, like uh, sticker subs killer. That's perfect. Right. Because you can't, what happens if you get stickers you don't like, you stick them somewhere, right? It's too much of a gamble, have too much stuff as it is. I think that's a lot of the concept. Yeah, we had a list of sticker subs one time and I didn't follow through on like picking one out. Yeah, and I think it was Susan who was telling me. I do think it's a great way to discover new things. Yeah, that's why I love the CW pencil box so much. I've ordered more pencils from the ones that they send out easily. Yeah, like that's just cool. Sticker, sticker subscription services seem like a no brainer. And like art snacks is awesome. I, they've always delivered good value. I just, I stopped because I, I just didn't use a lot of the products like with paint goods and, and things like that weren't really my thing. Like I'd get the pens and pencils. I like that. But if it was, you know, you know, an acrylic paint and paint brushes wouldn't really use to me. But I think it's an awesome product if you're into that. All right. We're going to wrap it up here. Chat. Thank y'all for being awesome. We'll be back Thursday. I think we're on a pretty normal schedule from here on here on out. Um, I don't know what else I got going on. Podcast tomorrow. <sighs> Talking with Sarah Beth Hunt Wednesday night. Talking with my buddy June Thomas on Thursday for Friends of the Show. Podcast with Mr. Hurley tomorrow. Uh, refill back in the queue. Back in the uh, back in your inbox on Saturday. Um, back to all the things all the things got a notification that something cool shipped uh, for spoke pins that we're testing out so fingers crossed on that lots of things lots to talk about lots to work on so 
give me a shout if you need anything. I'm here. I'll be online. Inbox is open. All the things. Y'all be great. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for the subs and the follows and the bits. And I, I, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, Twitch has been awesome. And it's been an awesome uh, platform. It's been an awesome uh, hang. And uh, it's because of y'all. Y'all are pretty cool. Thank you so much. Strange Camel, thanks for the follow. Bye.